Uh, hi, guys. Um, for those of you who are guests today, I'm Katie. I'm the ITC at Woodbridge High School, and I'm going to tell you guys about Padlet today. How's everyone doing? Very well, thank you. Good. Good. Great, All right. Great. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Um, is there anyone who, before we get started, anyone who's used Padlet and loves it and wants to talk about it? All new users? I used it as a student um, over the summer when I was in some of my classes. And I love the fact that you could get feedback pretty quickly and you could share things by just posing a, a question and it shares to everybody. Um, we did some small group breakout work and people were supposed to respond on the Padlet to the questions. And I thought that was a good way to keep track of the questions. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Anyone else? I've used it for like general in class discussions and I thought it worked really well, especially with my um, EL kids because they could read and respond pretty quickly. Um, I haven't really done a lot with like the extra stuff. Like I heard you could do a map and all that other stuff. So I'm really excited to see what that looks like. All right, great, cool. Anyone else? Okay, so I'm just gonna get right into it. I do have a uh, wakelet, of course. I always have a wakelet. Uh, and I will put this in the chat. Um, so if you wanna look at this later, this kind of goes over the basics of Padlet um, and you know, just some things to look at. So let's get into Padlet. So most, uh, if you're a guest today, you're not in our school account, but uh, still most of what I'm gonna say is applicable to you. Um, if you are in our school account and um, if you came in late and you're a Woodbridge person and you haven't got the link yet, I will share the link with you at the end um, after the guests leave today. So just hang around at the end for that. Um, so when you are in Padlet, this is what you're going to see. Uh, you can either make a Padlet, join a Padlet, or look at the gallery. And the gallery is all of the uh, yeah, like inspirational Padlets. You could just see kind of what people are doing. So uh, you can follow the Padlet. You can also follow people. So, um, you know, if someone makes a lot of Padlets that you like, you could follow them and get ideas. Um, with our school account, you're gonna be able to share Padlets with your, with your colleagues. So that's gonna be cool. You can just share them and then that person could use the same thing in their classroom. So I'm gonna to go to our school instance. Um, so we're just gonna talk first about making a Padlet. Um, so click make a Padlet, and you'll see that you have a few choices. So you can do different layouts. So there's a wall and everything just randomly gets placed on the wall. Um, you can make it a, a canvas so that they can, the ideas can connect. So that could be really cool maybe for scientific processes to show you know, ideas connecting from one um, you know, part of the process to the next. Um, a stream, which would just be a consistent one, one column of their responses. A grid, um, so you can arrange it in rows of boxes that way. Um, shelves, I like the shelf for when you do anything with categorization. Um, so I'll show you an example of that. A back channel, so this can be a chat like flow. Um, I was thinking it'd be really cool to put a, a Padlet chat at the bottom of an assignment. That way, if a kid had a question about assignment, they could put the, the question here in the Padlet and then you could respond there and all those questions would be visible for the whole class. So maybe you don't keep getting that same question over and over again. Uh, students could um, look, at, look to that for any questions they have. Uh, the map, so you can um, put you know, different things on a map. So that could be really great for that uh, get to know you back to school activity where students need to put their birthplace on the map or their dream vacation on the map. And, um, and they can, you know, it's a great get to know you activity. And then of course, for social studies or um, anything where you're talking about time and history, a timeline option. So those are the different Padlets that you can create. Um, let's just start with the wall one, the basic, basic Padlet, just to show you the features. Do you have any questions right now? Katie, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, can you make a Padlet? Like, can you like make one of these as a, like a copy for 
like each individual student or are they always interactive with students? You can make one and only give the link to a student, yes. Thank so you. then you could have a Padlet for each kid. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so when you create a Padlet, this uh, side panel will open and this is where you can give it a title. So we'll say, uh, virtual learning and you'll see it has like a little description that's always something whimsical like this one says made with serendipity uh, and you can change that and add more of a description uh, all right and then you can change an icon so you can just click uh, let's see is it thinking what's going on okay um, so it opens up and it's basically just emojis and so you can pick one um, I'm going to look for a computer. All right, here we go. Computer, and you'll see that icon just pops up right there. So it's just like if you know, an, a little item visual related to what you're talking about. Um, so you'll see the link to the address of the Padlet that you could provide students. And you can see that it's like this crazy code. Like I could modify this uh, and make it just something easy to type. And since it's my last name, like I know that this word's going to be available unless I've used it before. So you can customize your URL. Uh, then you can go to the appearance and you can customize the appearance. So I think this is an ugly wallpaper. Um, I usually like to use kind of plain backgrounds or, you know, kind of uniform colors. That's just me. Um, unless the, you know, there's like a theme to my Padlet and then maybe, you know, some of these pictures can be fun. But it's totally up to you. Um, color scheme, so light, light or dark mode is basically um, your options and so the boxes where students would respond could be light, mark, light mode or dark mode. Uh, and you can change your font. So those are the appearance options. Pretty basic, but all you need. Uh, then posting. So do you want it to say the student's name? You can turn that on, but our students are going to join mostly anonymously. Um, but you can turn this on and, and, and such if you wanted to. If students wanted to make accounts, they could. Um, new post position. Um, so do you want the, the newest post to be way down here in the bottom right corner, that would be last, or if you want it to be in the top right corner or left corner, it would be the first thing. So the newest post would appear in that location. Do you want classmates to be able to comment on other people's posts? And then reaction options. Um, students can like a post, uh, or you can upvote it or downvote it, uh, give it a one to five star, or you could give it a grade and you can even see the grade right there. Any questions about posting options? Okay. And then last thing is content filtering. So if you turn on approval, that means you have to go click on an approve button before the rest of the class can see it. So, you know, depending on the maturity level of your student, if you're concerned about, you know, them posting something inappropriate, you might want to turn that on and, uh, and then, um, you know, anything would have to be approved by you before the other kids see it. And you can um, also filter for profanity. Katie, real quick. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry. Um, did you say in order for a student's name to appear at the top of their post, they have to go and create an account first? Correct. Yeah. Okay, so is, would a way around that be like if you just wanted for one activity for them to have their names there, just ask them to type their name at the top before they put in their comments? Okay. Perfect. Yep. Thank exactly. you. Yep. All right. And so that's the basics of setting up your Padlet. Um, we're just going to ignore this advanced at the bottom. We won't use that. So any questions about setting it up? Then I'll just press next and I'll get to... Um, it says start posting. So students, they just click the pink plus sign in the bottom corner and they'll be able to post on this Padlet. So I'm going to share it with you so that you guys can post on it. I have to go to my sharing button up the top right corner and I'm going to change the privacy. Right now it says the Padlet is hidden and um, it, it can't be accessed by anyone. So I need to change the privacy to secret and then that whoever I give the link to can write on it. Okay, um, so that way, you know, I'm going to send you the link and then you'll be able to write on this. Palette. So I'm going to say save. Go back. 
And then I'm just going to get this code, oh, code right here. And I'm going to put it in the chat. And you guys can all then write on this Padlet. And I want you to explore the different types of ways that you can respond. So you'll see that you can write, you know, there's my name, write something. And if I click these three dots, you'll see all the ways that you can respond to something. So why don't you tell me, what are you excited about from virtual learning? So if I'm watching it in real time, you'll see at the top, it will say update and see me this approve. So I have to approve this before anyone else sees it. If I don't have that um, moderation turned on, if I don't have the approvals turned on, it would just automatically show up here on the, on the board. <laughs> I'm also stoked about that late start time. I am stoked about uh, getting to get my five mile walk in before we start learning every day. So you see, if you don't moderate it, you don't have to press this update button. It would just automatically happen. So that's definitely something, you know, depending on the maturity of your students or, you know, the topic uh, that you can definitely uh, So I would love to see someone add a photo to their, their post. So try that. So just click on the little three dots. There's, yeah, we're all, we can all have all the lunch we want at home. So you can see this would be really great to do during your live Zoom time. A uh, great way to get that interaction happening. Um, How do you give them access to your camera? To give who access to? Padlet. Oh, it should probably come up in the top corner. Let's see. If I try. I want to give it my camera, click my camera, it will say allow. And now, so up in the Chrome browser, a little allow button should have popped up. So hopefully you're using Chrome. Things get really slow on your computer when you let your camera be accessed by both Zoom and uh, Padlet. <laughs> so that's something you can consider. You might want to have them turn their Zoom cameras off if they're going to add their camera on here. All right. So this is a great, um, I just want to kind of go over all the response types uh, that students can have. So students can upload a file. So you could use this as a Dropbox, basically. Students could all drop you know, their presentation in here for other students to look at. Uh, links, Google image search and GIFs, which obviously are very popular with the kids. Uh, snapping a photo of themselves, uh, a video of themselves. Um, so this could be a Flipgrid alternative. Um, uh, like, so that if you wanted to have students really have a choice in how they respond, you know, some kids could do a video, some kids could do an image and text. So you have options. A voice recording, so you could use this for some like micro podcasting. Um, screen recording, draw it so they can doodle um, on a canvas and, and turn that in. So that could be great for math. Uh, place uh, a location on a map. Um, so that would really meet, lend itself more to the map option. And then, uh, or link to another Padlet. So kids have lots of ways to, to respond on this. Any questions or comments? Yes, I have a question. So when the student click on that link that you gave us, will they be taken directly to the Padlet or do they have to first log in or create an account? 
they would be taken directly to the Padlet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Katie, I had two quick questions. One, so in order, I think in order to submit the actual post, I clicked outside of the Padlet into the red space. Like there wasn't any return or post button, you know, so mm -hmm. it was a little unintuitive about how to actually submit it. Oh, okay. But I guess my question is, am I, is that the right thing to tell students, okay, after you've typed, click in the space outside of the post and it will send for approval? Yep, exactly. And then my other question, um, I didn't see a place to, I see a lot of people have their name. Is that because they have accounts? Yes, because <laughs> we have a stat, school account. Understood, yeah. Yeah. So as a teacher, I can come back if I put a grade on it and I can then give them a quick grade. I probably would never use this for graded work, but you definitely could. All right, so the next thing I wanna show is the little remake button in the top corner. So you can quickly, if you made this for one class, you could quickly remake it for another period and share it with them. You don't have to go through the whole making process. So just click the remake button and you'll be able to give it a new title like so you could just rename this virtual learning period two and you can decide to just copy the design or you want to copy the post so if you're just copying it for another class you would just do the design there's no reason to copy their responses and um, yeah and then you can just submit and then you'd have another copy in your library so really easy to make multiple uh, multiple ones for other classes the other thing I want to show you is how you'll put it in Canvas. So you're going to go to the share button and you can provide the link directly and that's good and you should always provide the link directly. But you can also get this embed code. So you'll see it says embed to your blog or website. I'm going to click that. And I'm going to just click this copy button. It's going to copy the code. So this is what we call embedding and you would put this on a you can put this as an assignment. Anywhere you have that rich content editor box, you can put this code. So I'm gonna go over to Canvas and I'm gonna show you what I do. So this could go on an assignment, a page, an announcement. You can put this anywhere. So, to a module. Oh, no, I don't wanna. Go to my Padlet example right here. edit it and I'm going to put this in the rich content editor but I'm not just going to paste it right into the box I have to go to the back side where it's the HTML editor so in the bottom right corner of the HTML edit or the rich content editor you're going to see an HTML button when it loads it's going to be a less than slash greater than sign less than slash greater than um, I hope you see me doing that in your dreams okay um, so in the bottom right corner, you're going to see that less than slash greater than sign. I'm going to click it. I'll know I'm on the back side of the editor when my toolbar at the top goes away. So if I flip back, you'll see I have this toolbar right here. If I click the rich content editor to go to the HTML side, it's gone. This is where I want to paste that code. So I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to click that button again. And when I come back to the front side, my Padlet is laying inside Canvas. So kids don't even have to go anywhere. They can do it right in here on this screen. Any questions about that process? Do we need to include a link for accessibility? Yes, so above the Padlet. So let me go back to the other side. I like to, I like to put the link above it. So um, I'm going to go to the HTML side. Oh, my computer keeps skipping down. And I'm going to put a break above the code. Uh, the way to put a break in the code is the less than, or less than sign, BR, greater than sign. So you put the things and a BR between. It stands for break. You'll see when I go back to the other side now that there's going to be a space above it. So that's a great, if you're, 
trying to learn a little bit of HTML code to help you make do some formatting, the break is good. So now I have that space here and I can say virtual learning Padlet and then I can go get the link. Copy the link, go over to my canvas again, highlight it, and put that link in. Yeah, so for accessibility, you always want to include a direct link to any embedded content you put on a page. Any other questions? This is going backwards a tad. Um, as I was watching your screen and you were approving everybody's posts and whatnot uh, on mine, I needed to hit refresh. So is that an assumption? Like I'm gonna pass that on to the kids if we're doing this live that they're gonna go ahead and need to hit refresh so they can see things that I approve? Yeah, if you don't use the approve mode, they shouldn't have to uh, refresh. So that is the, the downside of approvals, yeah. I have a question as well. So after you have embedded this into Canvas, the students will be able to do everything that we just did from the link on yep. Canvas page. Okay. Yep, awesome. exactly. They'll have that little pink button in the bottom corner. You can see it right there. Uh, let me scroll down a little bit. And yep, see the little pink plus sign? It'll be able to write, do it right here on the screen. So let me show you, I actually, um, so I've started, some assignments for our senior or actually every we have a class of 21 uh, classroom, a class of 22 classroom, a class of 23 classroom and a class of 24 classroom. So on Sunday, I launched this module of example assignments and one. Uh, so all of the different types of tools we are using this year. I gave them all assignments and kids are actually doing this already. So um, there are definitely kids that are like ready for school to start. <laughs> uh, so I'll show you the palette assignment there. I put this Padlet in since it wasn't a live activity. I put it in moderated mode, so I had to I have to approve things. So that's definitely something to consider. You don't want that kid who you know is 15 and has hormones rushing through his body at 2 a.m. to push something onto your Padlet that uh, you don't want the rest of the world to see. So I would say if you're doing a asynchronous Padlet, so it's not during uh, you know Zoom time, definitely use the moderation feature. All right, so here's the Padlet that I gave the kids. I made them a little video about what Padlet is and told them what to do. You know, the first time that they're gonna have to click the plus sign. This is an example of the, uh, the shelf. So there's different categories. So they had to tell me if their favorite snack was sweet snack, a salty snack, or a sweet and salty snack. I tried to make the, these real low stakes assignments for them to just practice and see. Um, so here on this one, you would click the plus sign below the column you want to do and then add your, your content. So, um, so yeah, this is what it would look like for the student. No, no accessibility concerns that to worry about. Mm -mm. No. Uh, that's why you're gonna put that link above it if you embed it, then that person who is using a screen reader will be able to, to go to the website directly. All right. Um, Uh, let's see. Other questions? Are you going to show an example of the back channel? You said you could use it, uh, you could put it at the bottom of an assignment? Yeah, so you would do the exact same thing. You just choose that template for back channel. And so I'll show you the Padlet. Make a Padlet. I'm not going to show all, you know, eight or six, eight options. You know, you can explore those. But, um, there's definitely different uses for all of them. Oh, that's a background. You'll see this one, they, they enter here. So if you wanted to use this 
as your chat instead of the Zoom chat, then the students would have access to it later if, in, in a way. So if you were trying to, you know, it would be more for students to manage, <laughs> having to manage this than the Zoom chat. Um, you could definitely save the Zoom, Zoom chat as a text and share it out later. But if you wanted, if you were sharing resources or something you wanted it to be alive, share, um, this could be an option. Um, so that is the batch channel. And Katie, do they pop up on the screen just like that when you put them in? They'll pop up on the screen? Yep, yeah, so this is not moderated. So yep, this pops up right away, yep. So this could be a good opener to find out how your students are doing today, that kind of thing. You can do it like that? Yeah, exactly. Okay. When you reply to a student's post, do you reply to it on their sticky note or you make a new sticky note? Um, you can reply to theirs if you set it okay. up in the settings. So here, oh, like, okay. I have to go to this one. This there's not much to set up. So uh, the gear is where you can change your settings. So uh, here, I would have to go to uh, acquires approval. So I didn't have that on this time. That's why it just automatically showed up. Okay. Um, yeah. So does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also in the share, I forgot to show this. Um, if you do have a co-teacher, you can add your co-teacher right here and they can be an approver. So that's also how you can, um, so I could add someone here. Let's see. Type in Bryant, you're here. And then I can say you can be an administrator. And now my co-teacher can have all the powers that I have. Oh. All right. Any other questions? I'm going to, for our guest today, I'm going to put um, the attendance in the chat. Um, so only if you're a guest do you need to fill this out. If you're here at my school, I, I will take care of your attendance based on the Zoom records. So um, you don't need to fill this out if you're a Woodbridge person. Katie, I saw where on the screen you were just on and said that we can add it to our LMS as an external tool. Do we not need to do any? We don't have that option. Okay. Yeah, um, it doesn't really, it sounds like that'd be a good idea, but I looked into it and we, it's not an app that you can add the way we've been adding apps. You have to have what's called an API key and we don't, I don't even have that. I can't add it. Only Diane at the main office can do that. And it doesn't even really work like you would want it to work. It's not like a grade pass back or anything. So I think embedding is just the best option. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I would say if you wanna do it for an assignment, you embed it into that assignment. And then kind of like I've been doing uh, for, uh, you know, our teacher week assignments, just like put a complete in the box once you did it. And then that would trigger me to go look at uh, why is the link not showing up? Hey, Katie, I mentioned in private chat that we were going to present this to Beamer as for consideration to, to get a site license for our school. Mm -hmm. um, but in your experience with the programs that where you need to be 13 or older or otherwise have, you know, supervision, are, do, do our middle schools, do they stare away from those sorts of Padlet, programs? yeah, Padlet is only approved for teachers to have accounts and the students, that's why it's like these anonymous posts. So we're, students are not supposed to have accounts. Gotcha, gotcha, thanks. Yeah, so, but having it, having the, the backpack account gives teachers unlimited Padlets versus the three they get in a free account. So for the price, the backpack price is $14.99 for the year for your, all your teachers to be able to make unlimited Padlets. It's a pretty good price. Yeah. Now $14, $1,499 to be precise. <laughs> So the attendance is in the chat if you're a guest. Uh, let me turn it on. Uh, you can click that link and refresh if you already clicked it. Uh, the attendance is now open. So only guests need to fill out it again. If you're a Woodbridge person, I will take care of your attendance. And yeah, hopefully that was helpful for you today. Um, any other questions? I have a question. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 you, you go ahead. I was, um, I'm planning on using it for the students like sort of cumul 
cumulatively where they have to collect a certain amount of things and post uh, per unit. Mm -hmm. Would your recommendation for that be that they start it or I start one for each student? Um, let's take that question in a minute after the guests leave. Okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> My question is um, about how you, it's not really about Padlet, but um,